Hey everybody, it's me, Everyday Nerdy, here with my assistant. And today we're going to be doing the CR10 all in one unit, which is why we have this stuff, the CR10 there, and the box that's now connect disconnected, the control box. So, according to him, all these are labeled, so it should be easier, easy to you know, connect them back. And right now, we're going to be basically removing all these screws and whatnot with our trusty L wrenches. So once I clap, you'll have this all out of the box. So now everything is, well not everything, the top stuff is off. So we're gonna do a picture lasts a, a long time. So we're gonna take photos so we don't forget how all this mumbo jumbo is. So. so now that we have the pictures taken, we're just thinking of first disconnecting everything from the power supply from here because that might be easier even though we have the photos we just peeled something over so let's get to it so now we have them all disconnected and you got this put this bad boy here so power yeah. switch out. power switch out that was the outlet this oh. is the actual switch oh that was the outlet this is the switch this thing disconnected so now we have these power cables so usually when we do these things as you can see i'm very hands-off i am the artiste i model things but anything that comes with like plugging things or like electronics i got my handy assistant i don't know where i'd be without my handy assistant since my hands break so many things I have even broken a light bulb. So the display was a bit easier to take off. You only had like, what was it? Four of those Allen screws in there. And then these ribbon cables. So I'm going to try and put this guy in here. Here is where I realized, not only did I print everything in the wrong layer height, I printed a bunch of wrong pieces. So. Let the games begin. This is. See, I have a picture of you holding it and all those cables. Mm -hmm. Pew pew! Fan one. Fan one. Mm -hmm. How's there fan one and fan two? I mean, fan one and fan three, but where's fan two? I'm assuming this uh, is fan two. Yeah. Well, that's just inappropriate. It should be in the same box. You would think that. It's fan three. Pew pew. Uh, what's left? The audio's dead. I don't even know if it's recording. That's it. So look at this empty bad boy. Looks like we won't be using it on the table for a while. Mm -hmm. So we're going to call it a night. And and we'll, we'll reconvene. So these two fancy things. Fancy words. We'll reconvene. So these we're no longer going to use. Yeah. So Ooh, I can use. I can make panels out of this. I can. I can do something cool with these. Panels. Yeah, for me. Okay. All right. And these Spanish can be reused. One. Reuse right. and recycle. Mm -hmm. The Spanish way. Everything's not trash. It's just new opportunities for other things. The Spanish we don't throw things away. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So for us, it'll be like what a day or so. For you guys, it'll be like. Bloop. So here I'm gonna try going over all the pieces I had to print for this. So first we're going to have the SD card. This is the SD card print. And if you notice all these prints that attach the printer, like this foot you're gonna see right here, they have these T screws that are M5 screws. Now for the feet, you're gonna print three that are the same. And this fourth one will be slightly different because this is the one that has the power insert where you insert the cable for the outlet and then the switch which is not being displayed right now and here's this other piece for more power cables lovely and then here's a switch that I did not have installed and here's a cover that honestly I'm not sure what it's for but it's what my friend had and I think it's maybe for because I have this new board this is another cover and this new board I think that made a difference. This is also something that was separate that wasn't in. This is a separate file for the display port. I, I liked it a lot. And then here we have one for the MOSFET, a fan, and the power supply. This power supply is not the one I ended up using. I ended up damaging it. 
because I am heavy handed and I just break things. So I use the updated power supply that's a lot thinner, but the screws that go into the power supply are different. Those are M4 screws. And the length I used, I don't remember, but I know I damaged a lot when I was using a long one because I wasn't paying attention and I was just like screwing and I think I damaged something. So here are the screws I was referencing. You have M5s, here's the T-screws on it. And then here's the M4 screws. And then now the screws that were used for everything else were screws that came with the printer. I just reused them. So here I'm gonna take off the feet. One, two, three. Almost everything here used L wrenches. Lovely. And then don't get fooled by things installing like this foot because everything here had to be reinstalled. Even though I'm taking the time to show you like how those T screws look because I had no idea how to do this. This is all my first time with this type of stuff. And I had to have my handy dandy assistant basically reinstall everything I installed because it was just, I did my best. So A for effort for me. But you got this guy here. And then two pointers all I can give are the screws that are near the fan, this one right here. I changed the screw because it was hard to reach. So I did it more with a screw that gives a better grip. So when I tighten it, I can use something like uh, tweezers. And then there's one more screw I'd recommend doing something similar. And it's this screw right here. As you can see from the tight space, there's almost no space to, to grab it or anything. And then now with all that installed, well, it's gonna get reinstalled, but you don't see that, it's off camera. I install the piece with the board and then this unknown contraction piece that I don't know what it's for. And then the last piece is the small piece for the power cable stuff. And now we have all the pieces installed. So here we have the electrical part, which was very challenging since I know nothing of this and I'm going to try to break this down as much as I can. I might be saying something wrong and whatever you see on the screen is probably going to be more correct. Except for one cable that gets installed incorrectly and installed in the correct spot. So we're first going to start with the MOSFET. The MOSFET, as you can see, the, the red is positive and then the black is negative. And on the power supply, the top three are positive voltages. And then right under that, there's three or four spots for the negative V. So the next thing is we have this red cable that goes to the, I believe it's ground. Honestly, I don't know. It's like this weird arrow design. I know it's not the line. And this one had a yellow coloring on it to make it look different. So we know it's not anything with positive or negative for the voltage. Now this next cable, this cable is a neutral cable, I'm assuming, because it goes to the end section. And this cable comes from the power outlet thing. This cable now comes from the power switch and this is, this goes to line. This cable here that I've just attached is installed in the cor incorrect location. This one I have it going to a negative voltage when it should be going actually to the MOSFET. This cable, I believe, is coming from that circular part on the top. This cable is from the board. It'd be the positive power from the board. In the center, there's a small section for a screw. But like I said, this is why before you take away, before you take apart the printer, you gotta take some really good photos. And one of our photos, it was really hard to see between the cables. This cable is the negative of the board. So this part I do want to show the display port because I had this set up the wrong way. This port was an add-on for the new board and this little section of the port I had it on the opposite way because there's enough space when you plug it in onto the board. This black part where the ribbons are connected is you can have it so it's on the edge of the board. And when I connected it when it was on the edge of the board, uh, the display wasn't working. But as soon as I pushed it over, like I removed it and then connected it more to the edge as what you see right now, it was working correctly. So like I said, I don't, maybe there was arrows on here showing that that's how it needs to be installed, but I didn't see it. So I wanted to take note and to let people know that like, hey, that was installed wrong. All right here. So I'm going to do my best to explain some of the stuff that we're doing here. So basically right now what you're seeing is you're seeing all the wires for the stepper motors and the end stops that are connecting to the board. Everything on the board is labeled 
And this was a bit scary because since we're changing the board, we're just hoping everything could go could go smoothly. However, like everything in life, there were bumps on the road. Two things that were, you could say, challenging in this aspect was we had an issue when we flashed the board that the, Z, the Z-stepper motors were reversed. And there's a feature you can add when you flash it to help you when the Z was reversed. So like when we went home, instead of going up, it would go, instead of going down, it would go up and then down was up and up was down. But when the adjustment and the flashing that solved that problem, the other issue we had was the Z end stop cable on the, that was connected to the board, it wasn't working. So like that end stopping thing for the printer to know to stop when it, when the Z is going down was not working. To solve this, I'm just going to regurgitate some stuff that's in a link down below of what we use to solve this problem. It is, <clears throat> let me quote, you connect it to the servo header on the ground and SIG pins. And you do an adjustment for, I believe, what is a variable or something in the flashing. Like I repeat, this is all in the link down below. I'm not an expert. And this solved our problem for the Z end stop not working. And if there's other issues you guys come about, we use the TH3 Discord and FAQ page, and that helped. Yo, that Discord, they answered our questions so quick. One thing I would also like to say, well, actually two things. I don't know where I need to say this, but do not tin the connectors. I saw there's one video where my husband said the guy's tinning the cables or the connectors. We looked it up, and for some reason that stuck in his head after all these years. You're not supposed to do that, so don't do that. And then the second thing is, um, this printer that we got came with an extended wire kit. I guess you could call the wire kit like the printer's harness. These are the wires that are for the stepper motor and end stoppers. They're like the ones in the, well, like, I like to call the fishnet section. <laughs> this is These cables, since we had the extender kit already, we were able to connect them to the new locations for all these printer items with this printer adjustment that we did. You might need it, you might not. I have a feeling you will because we add to use the extender wire kit. So, but here, as you can see, is the printer. I actually love it. It is super silent. It is great. We actually had to upgrade, uh, not even upgrade, we had to buy a new fan because one of the fans was busted. I don't remember which one. It took a while, but I am ecstatic with this change. It took us probably three years because we wanted to do it many moons ago, and then we slept on the idea like idiots. I hope this video helps people out, because it, we, if our friend didn't have like photos of how he did his, we would have been stuck. I'll have some links below for like the print stuff that I use. By print stuff, I mean the files and all that, and the modification for my display unit. So, good luck everyone. Bye!